Detective Amemiya burst into the room announcing the grim discovery of a fifth murder victim. There lies Ishiki Todemaru. Amemiya simply asks him to go home and sleep since he'll be useless in solving the case. Seeking guidance, Ishiki consults Kikusan, who recounts Ishiki's reckless actions and warns of potential expulsion from the team. Kikusan mentions a person who can solve the case gives Ishiki an old photo and an address. Ishiki goes to the address and meets Ron Kamonohashi, a messy-looking guy. Ron doesn't want to help but changes his mind when Ishiki says Kikusan sent him. Inside Ron's messy place, they talk. Ron has a weird lifestyle called the Floor of Indolence. He doesn't like technology and is generally negative. A call from Amamiya interrupts reporting a sixth murder. Ron doesn't want to help but eventually agrees. Ron and Ishiki rush to the crime scene where the sixth victim, Okamasa, is identified as a private investment broker. Ron strangely engages in a conversation with Okamasa's corpse, noting how he willingly surrendered valuables and drowned. The inspector and Ishiki are astonished by Ron's detailed insights. Ron, unfazed, observes intricate details about the corpse. Ishiki, taken aback, corroborates Ron's deductions regarding the past five victims, all drowned without drugs or alcohol in places lacking water. Ron proposes seeing overlapping details despite Ishiki's argument that there are no nearby water bodies. Ron insists they exist, showcasing sharp skills after a five-year break. Addressing Ishiki as Toto due to the long name Totomaru, Ron urges him to get cash. Skeptical. Ishiki hesitates to follow Ron's unorthodox methods. The scene shifts to a clothing store where Ishiki dons expensive yet tacky attire chosen by Ron. Ron insists on Ishiki chopping his messy hair. In protest, Ishiki challenges Ron to look in the mirror. They embark on an undercover mission. Ishiki, claiming sleeplessness, enters a barber shop for a haircut. Pretending to doze off, he observes the barber filling a bowl with water as Ron arrives. Ron boldly identifies the barber as the killer, citing oxygen-deficient air in the shampoo station. Connecting the dots, Ishiki is puzzled about how Ron deduced the barber's identity. Ron deduces the killer targeted victims with overgrown hair who sought haircuts for special events. He dressed Ishiki in upscale attire to match the killer's preferred clientele. Ron reveals the barber was caught, linking the crime to a place with dry ice and limited visibility for walk-ins. Chasing the fleeing barber, Ishiki traps him, exposing a money-driven motive due to stock debts. Ron, entering a trance, commands the barber to jump, revealing a mysterious power. As Ron snaps out of it, Ishiki struggles to hold on but is saved by Ron using a rope. Ishiki visits Ron, who eagerly asks about a new case. Without one, Ron throws a tantrum mentioning Blue, the world's best detective training academy. Ron recalls being hailed as a genius but was expelled for the deaths of suspects during exercises. Discussing Ron's sleuthing in a recent case, Toto proposes a plan to continue undetected. Toto shows Amamiya's photo. Ron deduces her popularity in a secret snapshot. The scene shifts to an earlier incident where Toto, excluded from a significant case, views it as a trash assignment. Ron, intrigued, joins, revealing a seemingly trivial case about a missing piggy bank reported by mistake. Ron quickly deduces information about the piggy bank, surprising Toto. The case takes an unexpected turn when the piggy bank's weight becomes crucial. Ron, seemingly defeated, lies on the floor, consuming black sugar syrup. Later, Toto rushes to Ron with fingerprint verification results. The younger sister's fingerprints are absent on the coins. Ron confirms the clue he sought, linking it to a murder case discovered earlier that day, a man found dead with a head injury. At the crime scene, Toto introduces Ron as a friend. Ron challenges Toto to solve the case, and Amamiya is skeptical. Ron lies beside the corpse, and Toto starts with a piggy bank case. Amamiya dismisses it, but Toto connects it to the murder, accusing the elder sister of the crime. As the elder sister confesses, Ron goes into a trance, commanding her to drown herself. Toto rescues her, and Amamiya is surprised by the connection between the cases. At the office, Toto shares details as Ron expresses a desire for tougher cases. The scene shifts to Blue, where Ron's activities have raised concerns. The principal orders an investigation, indicating potential tragedy with Ron's return. The tracking instructor volunteers for the task. Ron Kamonohashi's file at Blue reveals red markings on his body, particularly around his neck. The Blue Principal initiates an official investigation into Ron's activities, suspecting him of acting as a detective. Amidst the scrutiny, Ron tricks his acquaintance Ishiki into a fake emergency at a supermarket. After a humorous encounter, the duo ends up with a hefty bill. To alleviate the costs, they enter a raffle and win a hot spring voucher. Unbeknownst to them, Blue is monitoring Ron's every move. They head to the hot spring and despite the driver's cheerful conversation, the annex building turns out to be dilapidated. The blue tracking instructor makes deductions about Ishiki, raising suspicions. 
The duo gets room 0519 and Ron's identity as one of the two targets becomes more apparent. As they relax in the spring, Ron shares a dark legend about the place involving a sacrificial young woman in crimson water. Ishiki notices Ron's next scar, which Ron reveals has a number associated with his birth, number six. During dinner, Ron orders an unusual dish and explains his unique dietary choices. Ron introduces the game of life, a part of his secluded routine, but Ishiki diverts it to a ping-pong game. Ron, victorious, declares a special rule that the loser becomes the winner's slave for life. Later, they discover a creepy scroll detail in the Crimson Water legend. Ron assigns Ishiki a task as his slave. Amamiya, Ishiki's boss, unexpectedly joins them in the hot tub, leading to an awkward encounter. The following day, tension rises when a guest is found dead in the stream. Sachiko's death fulfills Ron's desire for a mystery. Ron, though a civilian, boldly announces his deductions, pointing suspicion at Amemiya, who left the room before Sachiko. The instructor adds fuel to the accusations. Ron denies Amemiya's involvement and claims he can prove it. The Bloom instructor seizes an opportunity to catch Ron, who counters by suggesting Ishiki's involvement in solving the case. Ron cleverly combines Ishiki's reactions with his own deductions. Ron points out that Amemiya couldn't have replicated the story as she hadn't seen the pamphlet. Pretending to speak on Ishiki's behalf, Ron presents his case. A woman with a blonde bob mentions a white mist near the river the previous night. To distract, Ron calls Ishiki to show the located ping-pong ball. Amamiya designates Ishiki as the lead investigator, still considering her a suspect. Ishiki, surprised, expresses gratitude, and Amamiya reluctantly acknowledges her string of bad luck, including walking into the wrong bathhouse. The police arrive and Ishiki reveals the woman's death was due to heart failure. Ron in his room is observed by the blue instructor. Ishiki explains the temperature difference causing heart failure and gathers everyone at the crime scene. Ishiki accuses the husband of murder, suggesting a carefully orchestrated trap using a bath mat. The husband protests, but Ishiki unveils a bamboo pipe directing hot and cold water, creating a deceptive effect. Ishiki deduces the husband's motive, affair with Michio, and he's arrested. While searching for Ron, Ishiki follows a figure into the woods only to find the blue instructor spits fire. Ron is tied to a tree. Spitz admits to tracking Ron since the raffle win, but Ron challenges him, presenting three possibilities for Spitz's involvement, bet, threat, or need for Ron's skills. Spitz concedes and offers Ron a job, revealing his objective to find his missing family. Ron declines, wary of trust issues, but agrees to use Spitz's skills until he proves trustworthy. The scene shifts to a dark apartment where a man in a white sleeveless hoodie smirks while opening a fridge filled with beer cans. Ishiki learns about a joint investigation for a serial killing case in Aichi Prefecture, where highly respected detective Omido Eagle Eye Kawasimi will join. Amamiya, Ishiki's superior, assigns him to lead the investigation. Kawasimi, with his unique traits and nitpicking habits, arrives creating tension. Amamiya and Kawasemi clash immediately. Kawasemi disapproves of Ishiki, declaring him unfit for detective work. Ignoring Ishiki, Kawasemi and his partner, Yamane, head to the crime scene. Feeling overlooked, Ishiki introduces Ron Kamonohashi, a consultant known as the hand puppet master Takamono Komoni. Yamane explains the case, dubbed the Hand Collector, involving a serial killer who stabs victims in the heart and cuts off their hands. Kawasemi, after a scuffle with a suspect, lets him escape, leading to the latest victim's death. Ron, determined to outsmart Kawasami, makes deductions based on the victim's small bird tattoo. However, chaos ensues when Ron struggles with hand puppets. Ishiki intervenes, crashing into Yamane. Ron accuses Kawasami of lying about letting the suspect go, prompting Kawasami to admit he lied to protect Yamane. Ron reveals a missing button on Yamane's coat, connecting it to his earlier mistake. Yamane, in a frenzy, discovers the button on a hand puppet. Ron contacts Spitz. Uncovering the victim's identity as Moshanakuji Minoru, the hand collector. Kawasimi asks Ishiki to explain Ron's actions, but Ron sprays black sugar syrup on Ishiki, cutting him off. Later, Ishiki reveals that Minoru killed himself to avoid arrest. The only person who met him was Yamane, who, under pressure, cut off Minoru's hands to cover up the suicide. Ishiki explains Yamane's actions, and he reluctantly admits to the charges. As Yamane is taken away, Kawasemi consoles him and expresses his willingness to wait for his return. Ishiki meets Ron, who is intrigued by a television show called Psychic Abilities, Fact or Fiction. The show features psychic Torij Dankichi and neurosurgeon Yusaki Mafu, who compete to prove the existence of psychic abilities. Despite Ron's skepticism, he finds the challenge entertaining. During the show, Torij claims to control minds using writing. 
He offers a cash prize to anyone who can resist his abilities. A subject complies with Torridge's written commands, leaving the audience astounded. However, neurosurgeon Yusaki questions the legitimacy, suggesting a connection between Torridge and the subject. The situation escalates when Torridge writes death on a card, causing the subject to collapse. The live broadcast halts, prompting Ishiki and Ron to investigate. Ron, a fan of Torridge, questions the psychic about the incident. Yusaki analyzes the subject's death, attributing it to a neurotoxin. Ron supports her findings, revealing a mark on the subject's neck. Torridge blames Yusaki for the death, but Ron requests Torridge's signature on Ishiki's notebook with the same pen used earlier. Torridge shifts blame onto Yusaki, who laments her inability to prevent the death. Ron, Ishiki, Shikata, and Yusaki discuss the events leading to the subject's demise. Ron notices the absence of body twitching after the fall, and Yusaki recalls the subject momentarily waking during CPR. Ishiki reenacts the events, revealing Torridge's trick of inverting the card to read sleep before showing it to the subject. Torridge injected the subject with poison amidst the chaos. Torridge protests, but Ishiki unveils the pen as the murder weapon. Torridge confesses to exchanging the pen's tip with a needle and accuses the subject of threatening to expose his tricks. Ron attempts hypnosis on Torridge, but Ishiki interrupts, fearing he was injected with the poisoned needle. As Ron and Ishiki leave, Ron expresses regret over the accidental contact with the pen. Yusaki arrives to thank Ishiki, revealing her mission to debunk psychic myths due to a past patient's refusal of surgery. Ishiki catches up with Ron, urging him not to give up sleuthing over a minor accident. Ron blames himself for endangering Ishiki, but is encouraged by Ishiki's words. Ron and Ishiki attend a Leonid Mihir shower view and party at an observatory, where Ishiki is recommended by Kawasemi as an insurance measure. Jumanji, the host, explains the tradition of keeping a replica gun to ward off evil spirits. The observatory's chef, Ms. Uno, and guests, Donazawa, Onudera, and Oriim join them. John Grizzly, a closed circle theory instructor from Blue, unexpectedly arrives, creating tension. The party revives memories of a decade old unsolved murder at the observatory. Jumanji, the host, shares his father's love for astronomy and expresses the desire to keep the observatory running despite the tragic past. The last guest, Orihim, arrives and the party heads to the rooftop for meteor shower viewing. Ron, more interested in the spread of dishes covered in black sugar syrup, enjoys the buffet. Grizzly hints at Ron's past, referring to the bloody training incident that led to Ron's suspension from sleuthing. As the meteor shower begins, Ron, showing off a pot belly, claims he'll watch it in his dreams. Onodera, a guest, is missing for over two hours, creating unease among the attendees. Suddenly, a gunshot is heard and the observatory door is found locked. Jumanji discovers Onodera dead with a gunshot wound, and Ron is found unconscious on the other side of the room. The circumstantial evidence, including the missing master key found in Ron's pocket, leads to Ron being labeled the culprit. Grizzly takes charge of the investigation, and Ron is arrested. The situation mirrors the bloody training incident from five years ago, creating a locked room mystery. Ron, seemingly hopeless, mentions he never passed a marksmanship test. Ishiki, believing in Ron's innocence, provides reassurance. Ron's revelation about the marksmanship test becomes a crucial clue. Ishiki leaves to investigate further. Jumanji anxiously awaits the police's delayed arrival at the observatory, where Ishiki re-examines the crime scene. He discovers that each light was shot with a gun, yet only one gunshot was heard. Attempting Ron's method of lying next to the dead, Ishiki is scared after seeing Onodera's face. Remembering Jumanji's mention of the telescope's automatic tracking, he finds the recording. After the credits, Mr. Grizzly, mistakenly assuming Ishiki is an intruder, arrives. Grizzly, determined to prove Ron guilty, has already interviewed everyone and gathered Alibis. Only Ron was away during the time of the murder, making him the prime suspect. Ishiki remains steadfast in believing Ron's innocence. Grizzly questions Ishiki about Ron's significance to him, expressing surprise at Ron having someone close. Ishiki reveals that Ron is a friend, surprising Grizzly. Ishiki shares his findings about the missing telescope recording between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. The police are delayed due to a typhoon and Grizzly warns that the real culprit may still be present. Ron thanks Ishiki for proving his innocence, explaining that his sleeping drug in his dinner left him drowsy. As Ron heads out, Grizzly finds a fishing line on the telescope. Ron, suspecting a trap, investigates further, revealing that the murder was planned and he might have been the intended target. Ron, devastated, begins an investigation of Grizzly's murder, finding a fishing line in his hand. Donzala and Jumanji rush in, and Ron stops Ishiki from defending him. Ron explains, speaking rapidly, and Ishiki presents his deductions. Another gunshot is heard on the roof, and a gun is found. 
Ahn and Ishiki recount the events after the first gunshot, questioning how the locked room mystery was achieved with the master key in Ron's pocket. Ishiki suggests fishing line, but Ron corrects him, revealing glue on the doors. Ishiki continues narrating and Ron turns off the lights, spotting the fishing line and the hula hoop. In the dome room, Ishiki confidently announces that the culprit will soon be apprehended. He recounts the events leading to Grizzly's death and implicates Jumanji as the mastermind. Jumanji denies involvement but is pressed about Onodera's murder. Ishiki reveals Jumanji's elaborate plan to frame Ron. Jumanji, aware of the malfunctioning lights, drugged Onodera. The fishing line triggered the gun when Onodera attempted to open the dome, further implicating Ron. Jumanji protests, but Ishiki unveils the replica gun from the lobby. Jumanji's fixed crumbles as he accepts responsibility. Ishiki points out Jumanji's motive. Onodera was investigating the unsolved case from 10 years ago involving Jumanji's father, who had committed mass murder and suicide. As Jumanji ingests a pill to end his life, Ron commands him, revealing the dark influence behind the scenes. Jumanji's last words hint at a mysterious figure manipulating events. Dawn breaks as the police arrive, and Ishiki notices a shocking detail on the floor. After the investigation concludes, Ishiki takes Orihime's statement, receiving praise for his work. The police leave with the bodies, and Ron expresses regret over Grizzly's death. He discards his earlier pledge to quit sleuthing, linking the bloody training incident with the observatory murders. Ron unveils the floor's marked pattern resembling the scar on his neck, realizing he was framed. He vows to return to sleuthing, driven by the challenge posed by the manipulator. The scene shifts to a police boat, where Jumanji reveals his faked death and collaboration with the House of M. Jumanji acknowledges the criminal underworld's apex, the House of M, and exposes their involvement in orchestrating the murders. The older policeman, a family member, shoots Jumanji. A young man underneath the mask reveals his connection to Ron's lineage and hints at a deeper family connection. The brother expresses confidence that Ron will eventually appreciate family ties, given his dual heritage from Sherlock Holmes and James Moriarty. Ron takes charge of the floor of indolence, airing out the cafe. Ishiki notices a change in Ron's demeanor post-observatory incident. Ron suspects foul play orchestrated by those responsible for the red mark on his neck years ago. He hands Ishiki a package for Amemiya from Mandan Island. Amemiya dismisses the souvenir, assigning Ishiki a new case instead. Ishiki encounters Monkey Chakori, a reporter shadowing him for a day. She praises Ishiki's detective skills and recounts being saved by a police detective in her past. In a cafe, Ishiki navigates a delicate interview, and Monkey admires his calm demeanor. The barista turns out to be Ron, now going by Chasako Kamaku. Ishiki questions Ron privately, and Ron playfully teases Ishiki about being on a date with Monkey. Three customers enter and Ron serves them unique lats, drawing platypuses, leading to an unexpected death by poisoning. The police arrive, finding a cyanide capsule in the cup. Ron humorously communicates with the deceased, but Monkey urges him to stop interfering. Ishiki questions the three suspects and discovers a possible motive related to his stolen boyfriend. Ron offers Ishiki his phone with notes on social media evidence. Ishiki, confused, receives a towel from Ron and seeks clarification. Ron hints at solving the mystery and instructs Ishiki to keep an eye on the cafe. Following Ron's lead, Ishiki gathers everyone, revealing that Julie was murdered intentionally due to her attention-seeking behavior. Hayami, driven by jealousy and resentment, is exposed as the culprit. Ron momentarily commands Hayami to harm herself, but Ishiki intervenes, preventing tragedy. Monkey appreciates Ishiki's dedication and forgives the broken recorder. Ron receives a diagnosis at the Eastern Japan General Hospital revealing that his compulsion to pressure culprits to die is not inborn. Dr. Mofu recommends further tests at specialized research centers. Amemiya instructs Ishiki to go to Aichi and check on Eagle Eye Koesumi, whose department's arrest rates dropped since Yamane's arrest. Ron and Ishiki head to Aichi by train. During their journey, Ishiki wonders if Ron cares for Koesumi's well-being. They part ways at the station, and Ishiki's work at the Aichi police station is swiftly completed. Ishiki overhears Kawasemi reprimanding an undercover officer and joins him for lunch at a noodle bar. Kawasemi acknowledges Amamiya's intention to send Ishiki and admits to losing his edge despite his persistent work ethic. Returning from the market, they encounter a warning about the Mad Chameleon, a criminal attacking students with a wrench-like object. As Kawasemi details the case, another student is attacked. The investigation turns into a murder case when the student dies. Ron, coming out of the National Neurological Research Center, calls Ishiki who updates him on the case. Ishiki and Kawasemi face challenges, with the CCTV cameras offering no clear images. Ron arrives, adopting the alias nearsighted Kawasemi, and offers insights. 
Ron suggests the victims may be involved in a money collector scam and encourages Kalasemi to find the real culprit. Using his deductive skills, Ron motivates Kalasemi to focus on the three released men. Kawazami zeroes in on a suspect who returns to retrieve the victim's phone and is caught. The case is resolved and Ishiki and Ron head back home. Ishiki updates Ron on the captured culprit and Ron shares the neurological test's summary. Ron appears concerned despite the potential breakthroughs in understanding his hypnosis. Ron and Ishiki discuss the possibility of Ron helping Spitz find his missing family. Ron sets a condition for his assistance. Spitz must retrieve files from Blue's vaults regarding the bloody training incident. Ron suspects a medical connection to his hypnosis condition, as he has no memory of three hours during his treatment. Spitz, although initially reluctant, agrees to the deal and the trio heads to Yamanashi. In Yadamura village, Spitz reveals his brother's disappearance 11 years ago while studying ethnology. Ishiki hears a snake in the bushes and the trio reaches a waterfall, spotting a mysterious woman who quickly flees. A near accident with an axe introduces a trio of shady men. Arriving in the village, they learn about a government dam project causing unrest. The mayor explains the villagers' belief in Yadagami-sama, a night snake god protecting the village. The government official leaves, promising to return for surveys the next day. Spitz, Ron, and Ishiki stay at the mayor's house. Spitz shares more about his brother's disappearance, and Ishiki notices a snake-like silhouette outside. Rushing to the waterfall hut, they find no one but hear a thud. The next morning, the government official is found dead in the waterfall stream with snake-scale-like marks around his neck. The mayor claims it's the work of Yadagami-sama, Miss Mi, the mayor's granddaughter, supports the idea of divine intervention. The mayor insists it was Yadagami-sama's act supported by the villagers' strong beliefs. Ron, Ishiki, and Spitz discuss the possibility of mass hypnosis. They encounter Muroi, an ethnologist enamored by Yadagami-sama's power, who talks about the deity's vanishing act 15 years ago. Ron questions Muroi about his whereabouts during the previous night's reign, and Muroi mentions being at the temple with snake artifacts. Back at the hut, they review the events, finding nothing unusual except for Ron's black sugar syrup bottle on the tatami mats. Ron declares that Detective Ishiki, himself, has solved the case. Toto reveals that Ron's unintentional act of dropping a tube of brown sugar syrup on the mat in the hut played a pivotal role in solving the Yadagami-sama murder case. A flashback unravels the mystery. God Yada's scroll is tied to a rock and falls beneath the mat when the trio opens the door. Later, someone lifts the mat to retrieve the scroll, causing Ron's syrup tube to roll farther than where he dropped it. The culprit orchestrates the crime to make it seem like Yada's magic is involved and ensures all three witnesses, including the village chief, are present. Ron uses his hypnosis technique, kill on sight, to force the chief to confess to strangling the damn construction official due to resentment. Facing imminent danger, the chief confesses and Ron compels him to jump off a cliff. Toto attempts to save him, but the cliff collapses, leading to a fall. Ron spots someone throwing a rope, rescuing Toto and the chief. The chief is arrested and the villagers leave. Alone, Ron confronts the mysterious man who turns out to be Spitz's older brother, Shepard. He suggests that the chief's actions were driven by protecting his granddaughter, Mia, who harbored feelings for Shepard. Shepard asks to be arrested, but Ron emphasizes the chief's sacrifice for Mia's sake. Grateful for their assistance, Spitz decides to fulfill his part of the bargain and infiltrates Blue to retrieve the bloody practical training case file for Ron. However, he is caught by Principal Eam. Meeting with Ron and Toto, Spitz reveals that the case file has been erased from Blue and police records. The blood at the crime scene doesn't match Ron or the victims, and Mr. Grizzly's body had the same mark as Ron's neck. Eam discloses that she knew Ron's parents and hopes he can clear his name. Ron, Toto, and Spitz realize that other Blue alumni who investigated the M family died, pondering how to find evidence proving Ron's frame-up. Ron sees this as a thrilling challenge and is confident that the M family will reveal themselves as he and Toto continue solving unsolvable cases. In a parallel storyline, a mysterious group consisting of an underling and a suited boy contemplates killing a serial killer, revealing themselves as part of the Moriarty family. The boy Milo is revealed to be Ron's half-brother and Winter, the fourth child, expresses displeasure that Ron, as thorough as he is, is allowed to live. Milo shares that only the superior siblings are permitted to survive, hinting at the ongoing rivalry between the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and the Moriarty family. Winter heads to Japan to subject Ron to the horrors of the Moriarty family. 